Hey y'all, I am back in the kitchen today and it's been a minute, but here I am. And I wanted to get back in here because I had a video, it was actually a YouTube short that I filmed a long time ago of me making some bone broth. And it got so many views that I thought, well maybe folks would be interested in watching the whole process rather than just a video of some bones in a pot. Anyway, so I'm going to make some because we're heading into flu and cold season here and I love to have my own homemade bone broth on the shelf. What is bone broth? Bone broth is simply uh, a enriched stock. If you were to go to the grocery store and you go to the chicken broth aisle, you're going to see broth sitting there that you'll have chicken, you'll have vegetable, you'll have beef broth. Broth is just a very light seasoning. I mean, it's just basically water that you've kissed a chicken with it. Because <laughs> broth isn't very much of anything, actually. It's very light in flavor. I prefer stock. Stock is a deeper, darker, more rich and flavorful liquid to cook with. And that's what I like to do my soups and my stews with is a stock. But the stuff at the grocery store, it doesn't taste very good and it's expensive. So, I like to make my own because I'm cheap. Well, I'm not really cheap, but I, I, I'm frugal. How's that? I'm frugal. I like it to be the way I want it, and I like it to be good. And, oh, there's my oven. It's ready, y'all. Anyway, I'm going to make some bone broth from beef bones. I bought some bones yesterday at the grocery store from the frozen bone box area at my grocery store. You might have to ask your meat market, dude, for some bones. I actually had to ask too because I didn't see any in the meat counter and he said, oh, we keep them in the freezer. And I thought, okay, whatever. So I went and got me this big box. Now this is a 10 pound box. Um, I didn't think 10 pounds was gonna be quite enough because I'm gonna make a bunch. Listen, this is a project. Don't make a little when you can make a lot because, well, it goes fast and you might have to give some to your sister or your mama or something, so you better make a little extra. And it just makes sense to, if you're gonna go to the pro, to all this trouble in making this, you might as well make a bunch. So anyway, I bought this 10 pound box, and then I bought a couple of little bags. They had some two pound bags of bones sitting there. So I bought three of them. So, open her up here. This is 16 pounds of, ooh, of beef bones. And they look to be femur bones or something because they are, uh, they're big. And the femur's the biggest bone in the body, right? Same on a cow. Um, these are full of marrow and they're covered in collagen and they're covered in connective tissue. All of that wonderful yumminess is going to cook down in your bone broth. And that is what makes a good broth is when you let time work its magic and it breaks down the physical structure of what you're using. Now this bone hopefully is going to end up nice and soft. It's going to have released its, well the marrow for sure. The collagen is going to break down. It's going to release the gelatin which is going to make the stock amazing. And also, well, there's just a lot of minerals and nutrients inside bone that maybe you're not getting it in your everyday diet. Maybe your multivitamin doesn't give you exactly what you're needing. So bone broth is it's very healthy for you to, to take. Some people use it as medicine. Some people drink bone broth in the morning with their breakfast just because it fortifies them throughout the day and it's full of stuff and it's good for your joints and Blah, blah, blah. You can read it on Google. You can Google bone broth benefits. And you can sit there and read all damn day. But I just like it because of the taste. And so that's, you know, why it's important to me. Like I said, the reason why you make bone broth, it's subjective. You might just not want to make it, but you want to watch me make it. And that's fine too. And I'm glad you're here. So I like to roast my bones first because roasting imparts another layer of flavor. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, which I hope you have, then you know that I'm a, I, I, I preach about flavor. Flavor profiles and blending flavors and stacking flavors and just really getting the most flavor out of your food that you can because well, that's what makes it good. 
Right, right. Well, when you roast meat, when you roast the bones, anything, you're going to give it a nice dark color. That color is going to release the yummy goodness in our stock when we add it after we've roasted it. So, here we go. I have lined this giant sheet pan with some, well, parchment paper. And I'm just going to put my bones on this paper. Now, willy-nilly, you don't have to, there's no set way about it. But I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to fit all these bones on here. And if you're squeamish, you can put on some gloves. I'm a butcher's daughter. I grew up in this stuff. So it doesn't bother me in the least. Because I know where food comes from. I know it doesn't come from the supermarket. I know exactly where bacon comes from and a hamburger. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to call me or follow me. Go to Facebook and friend me and let's talk about where your food comes from because so many people nowadays are disillusioned about where their food comes from. We've gotten so far away in this culture from, you know, our roots. It's kind of sad. I mean, I'm not a farmer or anything, but I know how to grow green beans. I can grow something. And I definitely know about animal husbandry and where stuff comes from. Anyway, all these bones have fit in this on this pan and that is wonderful and look I have just laid them out like this I'm not going to do a thing to them I'm not adding anything to them I am just going to put these straight in the oven <clears throat> now look they are going to have to cook for about 40 to 45 minutes because you're going to think that they're going to be burned well I'm not burning them I'm just crisping them up real nice and I want them to develop a covering of the char and well that's just what I'm looking for so I'm going to stick them in this preheated oven now I have a convection oven and that just means it's got a fan that'll run and add a little extra heat to it because we're going to bombard these with heat I've got a 450 degree oven going on so let's go in here I'm going to burn myself because I didn't open the dang door all the way all right so boom there it is I'm going to let it go for 45 minutes and I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how wonderful it is. And then we're going to go from there, okay? Hey, y'all. Okay, so the buzzer just went off. And it's 45 minutes that the bones have been roasting. And it smells real good. A little, a little burnt smell, but it's not bad. It's actually pretty stinking nice. So I want to open up this oven. I'm going to pull these bones out. Oh, yes. Oh, boy. Oh, look at this, y'all. The bone marrow is just popping and snapping and crackling. Oh, put that down. Yes, this bone marrow has got soft. It's super soft. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's people pay big money for this. Let me show you. Woo. Yeah, do you see that? That little gelatinous mound of stuff it's just the bone marrow people love it they love to spread it on bread toast whatever it is just super flavorful it's the yum yum part of the bone and well it's going to work on our beef bone broth and make it amazing so i'm going to get my pot over here so listen there are a bunch of different ways that you can go about doing this I'm using a pressure cooker. I'm using my big pressure cooker. Now, I've got a small one that I use for normal everyday stuff, but I have a Mondo pressure cooker. This is actually my pressure canner. This is a 23-quart Presto pressure canner, and I'm going to cook it, and I'm going to make my bone broth in it because it has the big capacity to make a bunch. And that's what I want. If you have an Instapot or if you have just a regular pressure cooker, you can use that too. You won't be able to make the quantity that I'm making. But using a pressure cooker, it takes a fraction of the time. 
Because when you're making a traditional bone broth, that stuff has to cook all darn day. And I'm talking over 12 hours, if not 15 to 16. And what you're doing is you're just trying to break down the bone. And it takes a long time. But when you're cooking under pressure, it happens just like that. It's Okay, so maybe not just like that. It does still take a couple of hours. But three or four hours compared to 12 to 16 hours, I take it every day. So I'm putting these bones straight in my pot. And I'm not going to pour them in because I probably poured all over myself. So I'm going at it just like this. Woo. I'm just piling them in here. It has released so much yummy goodness. So do you see all this stuff, y'all? This is the bone marrow. Look at that, and it just bubbles up. Anyway, it's gonna get, it's going straight in the pot. See, I'm just adding it to my pot. Okay, so I've almost got all these bones added to my pot. That is at least 16 pounds of roasted beef bone. It smells good. It smells real good. Let me move the stuff around so I don't burn my, myself. I am not going to pour what has leached out onto this bacon dish because a lot of it is, is fat and I don't really want to add any extra fat into my pressure canner, cooker, pot, whatever because I'm going to have to pull that out at the end when I'm finished cooking it because you can't really processed stuff that has a lot of oil in it in your pressure canner when we go to put it in the jar because it won't seal because that oil will come up under the lid and you can't get a good seal so we're trying to prohibit that so I'm not adding all that so here is well you see it's not quite half full it's good enough now I'm going to add aromatics you can add whatever you want seriously I am going to add carrots and celery and onions. And I prefer to go heavy on the celery because I love celery and I love the flavor that celery imparts. Do you have to go at it and cut it up nice and pretty? Can't, no. I'm just throwing this stuff in. See, look, boom. These carrots, I will break it in half, I guess. But you don't have to. I'm using just regular old celery and I'm using a tricolor carrots that I get at Sprouts Market because I think they're beautiful. Don't use all of the dark ones though because then it makes your stock kind of murky. But look, I'll, I'll do that just to use my knife. See? This goes straight in. I'm going to also throw in my onions and I'm using the onion skins, the little butt part. I don't care. All this is going through a strainer anyway. But I am going to cut them in half just to Hurry the process and just in the pot. In the pot she goes. Boom. In the pot. I guess this was about six big onions. I'm not a big stickler on measuring when you're making broth because, well, you can't hurt it. It's not, I mean, it's going to be fabulous. This is a whole stinking clove of garlic. I'm just going to cut it in half like this. Toss the side. Look at that. And it's going straight in. Shell, crumblies, and all. Because there's a lot of flavor inside the skin of the garlic and the onion. So I don't want to lose that. Just don't lose it. Just throw it in. And here's the rest of my celery. I'm going to cut it in just to make it more manageable. And it's going in. All right, so I've got a nice big pot full of veg and bones. Now I'm gonna add some herbs. This is some bay leaf. Um, bay is a very distinctive flavor and it's wonderful in soups and stews. And so I always like to add some fresh bay if I'm making stock. Um, I generally keep dried bay leaves on hand if I'm cooking with it, but when I'm making a pot of stock, I love to use these fresh ones. Mm, they smell nice. So I just threw five or six of those in. I went out in the yard and I cut off this beautiful thyme. I love thyme. Thyme smells so good. 
uh, just a big old handful of thyme. Here's some here's a little oregano. See, I'm not worried about how much, y'all. That's probably a tablespoon or two of oregano. A whopping handful of that. And then this is four big sprigs of rosemary. I love rosemary. I love the smell of rosemary. Now, I'm not super, super keen on the flavor of rosemary. I, I like a little of it. I don't want it to crowd out the main flavor that I'm building here. But... I could smell it all day. It just smells like, I don't know, it smells like Thanksgiving to me. I love it. Okay, so in it goes. This is a big pot of stuff, y'all. All right. Now I am going to season it a little bit with some salt and pepper. So these are just regular black peppercorns. Since I'm going to be making a considerable amount, I'm hoping to end up with. Well, I can't even hardly guesstimate, but at least 12 quarts is what I'm hoping for. So anyway, it's going to take quite a bit of seasoning. So that's two, I'm going to go three tablesp heaping tablespoons of peppercorn. And I'm going in with some salt. Now this is sea salt. You can use whatever you have on hand. This is what I grabbed. Uh, one, two, three. That's four tablespoons of salt. It's probably more like five because it was heaping. And then because I don't, I didn't have another clove of garlic. And I love garlic as the one of the main profiles in a stock. So I'm just going to add a little, a little extra. There's a, a, a tablespoon of granulated. And let's get another one. And just... Seriously, you can't have fun in the kitchen with the point. All right, so I've got my aromatics in there. I've got my flavorings in there. Now I'm just going to cover this sucker with water and we'll see how much we can fit in. I have got this big tub that'll hold 12 quarts. And I'm just going to pour it straight in. Mm. Oh, yeah. Shazam. Now... I did go a little bit over my last fill line, but I don't guess it will hurt anything. I mean, I guess you'll find out at the end of the video if I blew up or anything, but I'm hoping that doesn't happen. Uh, you see, I just added things. There was no method. I just threw it in the pot. Now I'm going to get my lid to a pressure cooker. I'm going to... Put my lid on. Now I'm going to move this over to my stove. I'm going to cook this until the pressure starts. Uh, well, first of all, we'd have to purge the pressure canner. That means you're going to let it steam for 10 minutes to make sure that all the nooks and crannies are filled. And we're going to get a, a nice steam chimney coming out of here for like 10 minutes. So it will be going. Pshh. That just tells us that things are moving along the right way. Then after it has steamed for 10 minutes, then I'm going to stick my little toggle on, my 11 pound weight, because where I live, when you're cooking with a pressure cooker, pressure canner, blah, 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 we have to have 11 pounds. Sometimes people use 15, whatever. Mine's 11, so I'm gonna use 11 pound weight. And then I'm gonna cook this stuff, well, probably all afternoon. I'm gonna let it go nice and slow, keeping constant pressure, probably for about three and a half to four hours. And then I'm going to check it. And it should be, well, it might not blow your mind, but it's going to be delicious. And it's going to be well worth the effort because anytime you can make something homemade where you govern what goes in it, winner, winner, bone broth dinner, right? Right. All right. So if I don't throw my back out moving this over to the stove. Alright, I'm gonna turn it on. I'm waiting for the heat to build. So I'll be back directly, y'all. I've definitely got a plume of steam rising here out of the little stack. Kinda hard to see, but I've got my hand in the stream. Do you see that smoke? Not smoke, it's steam. Anyway, 
It's been steaming for 10 minutes, so I'm putting the towel on. And now, I'm just going to wait until the pressure comes up to 11, and then I'll put my timer on. Okay, guys, it has been four hours. I let these bones go on the stove for four hours, and it was under 11 pounds of pressure the whole time. I guess it's the moment of truth. We're going to see what has happened inside this pot. See? There's no steam coming out, and that tells me that the pressure's at zero, and the gauge says it's at zero, too, so... It won't blow up, I promise. Here it goes. Smells amazing. Seriously, this stuff is kind of cool looking. Um, I'm pretty thrilled. Let me get my dipper here. This stuff is the most beautiful color. Let me uh, get up a spoonful of it for you here. I already know that it's going to taste ridiculous. Good. See how pretty that color is? It's nice and brown. Now, granted, it's pretty much ready to go or whatever you want to use for but i'm going to let it sit in the refrigerator well i actually want to let it sit on the counter for a while to cool down a little bit and then i'm going to sit it in the refrigerator because i want the fat on top to settle and set up so that i can pull it off because like i said earlier fat won't do well in a pressure cooker as far as sealing the jar and that would just be tragedy if your jar didn't seal so I'm going to give this a taste when I kind of move the fat around here. It is just so aromatic. I know that's a, a word, but it is. It smells so good. I can totally smell the rosemary. It's beautiful. It tastes just fabulous. I can see why people would just drink this for medicinal purposes because it's full of nutrients. Uh, if you don't feel like actually eating something, if you have stomach trouble and you, you know, just something heavy on your stomach is not going to make you feel good, I can understand why you would supplement with bone broth because it is delicious. And I am so excited to process this stuff tomorrow. Now, I will include um, pictures and things on my blog post because you're going to be able to see this. I'll have a recipe and all the stuff listed at jamieteachmetocook.com. All you have to do is go to the search bar and type in bone broth and you'll see all kinds of pictures and you'll see the process of me actually pressure canning it. Um, if you're not that familiar with the pressure canning process, I have done it several times with several different products on my website, so feel free to sh sh swoop through the different topics and take a look. I know I did uh, vegetable beef soup. I processed it. There's a couple other things. Chili sauce, I think I did it. Anyway, they all start to run together. But I, I'm thrilled, and I think you will be too. And remember, it's not just beef that you can do this to. You can do it with pork bones. You can do it with chicken bones. You can do it with whatever. I'm curious to test out the consistency of the bone. Now, I don't expect this bone to be just falling apart. I don't expect to be able to smush it very easily with a fork, but I am... Whew, I can't get one because all I'm getting is a dill piece of onion. Come here, you. Okay, so here's a bone. All that beautiful meat and connective tissue is just kind of hanging on. Let me get me a fork. Let's just see if we've made an impression at all on this bone. Okay, so it's still rock hard, but I've definitely, the pressure and the heat has definitely it has definitely compromised the structure of the bone because it's just starting to peel off. You can I can see the layers of the bone. 
that just tells me that this bone has started to break down. It started to release its minerals and all that yummy goodness that's inside the bone that we're looking for has leached out into my broth. So I'm thrilled. It's done its job. Now, I guess I could let it go for another hour or so, or maybe even two. But I ain't got time for that, y'all. I got stuff to do. So, uh, four hours pressure cooking for bone broth for me. Plenty of time. So, anyway, be sure to check out the blog post, like I said, at jamieteachmetocook.com. And let me hear your thoughts. I love it when you when people leave me notes or they leave comments. Um, I like to learn things every day. I love to teach and I love to pass on whatever knowledge I have. Um, God help us if I'm the one that's responsible for teaching people a lot of stuff. But I do know my way around the kitchen and I do know what I'm doing when it comes to this stuff. So I feel pretty confident that I can point you in the right direction at least. So with that being said, I thank you for watching and uh, I'm going to start straining. See y'all. It's just a little add-on video that I couldn't resist doing for you. This bone broth sat in the refrigerator overnight so that I could get the fat to congeal like this and pull it off. This is going to let me have a beautifully clear broth when I go to can it. All I have to do is just pick these big pieces of congealed fat out of my liquid. Shazam! This bone broth is beautiful, y'all. Anyway, I just wanted to show you this and to tell you that when you're making your bone broth, don't be afraid to just stick it in the fridge overnight after you strain it because look how easy it is. Dang. And then you're left with a big pile of uh, beef fat. I guess you could do something with that. I'm going to have to study on it. Okay, y'all. Bye.